So I have one case study that I really wanted to share with you. And I was only going to share this if we had enough time. And it looks like we do. So back to um, clotting in, in venous disease. I was saying that a lot is happening. A lot is coming down the pike with new information. But one of the patients I wanted to share was a woman who I met about eight years ago. She was 92 years old and she was one of those firecrackers. She would drive from Florida to Maine every spring. She would camp all summer, or live in a cabin at a KOA campground here in Maine. She would volunteer for the campground, painting picnic tables and trail maintenance and doing whatever she could to help out. And her heart was truly here. She loved Maine. She would have liked to have stayed in Maine her uh, senior years, but she had such bad arthritis that she needed the warm waters of Florida to help her joints. So every fall, she would drive herself back down to Florida. The year I met her, she had driven up from Florida and her legs started to swell about halfway here and she didn't know what to make of it. And she was scared, she was concerned. And when she got here, she went to the emergency department. And um, sure enough, she got diagnosed with a deep vein thrombosis. And this was the kind of woman who uh, wasn't afraid of the internet. She jumped right on, she read everything she possibly could about deep vein thrombosis. And I think she probably Googled vein care in Maine and the Maine Healthcare Center came up, so she called me. And um, she came in and she was visibly distraught. And she said, you know, I'm, I'm a healthy 92 year old woman. I'm strong. I, you know, do all this great stuff. She's like, does this mean I can never drive from Florida to Maine again? Does this mean every time I do this, I'm going to get a clot? Does this mean, and she had about a hundred questions and they were all fraught with, with fear and all hallmarked by this was the end of a life that she loved. And it really broke my heart. And I, you know, had a great conversation with her and we talked about, you know, what her risk factors for clotting were and, and why this could have happened. And we did an ultrasound. And sure enough, she had pretty significant deep to superficial reflux. What I mean by that is, you know, again, another one of my little drawings, I'm gonna switch from uh, the shared view back to my drawing. You know, she had beautiful, smooth laminar flow in her deep veins. Um, and as soon as I said laminar flow, everybody flashed back to physics, right? Remember laminar flow, we would talk about um, blood moving in a nice straight line without any kind of turbulence. So even though there's valves, which can be a little disruptive of flow, generally speaking, a healthy vein has smooth flow. I always like to think about a whitewater river. When a river is flowing smoothly, no matter how fast it's going, if there's no bends, no rocks, we don't see the rapids, we don't see the swirls and the white water. However, when you have a change in direction, when that river starts to bend, the blood literally swirls. I mean, the water literally swirls around the rocks. Um, when you think about the Whitewater River, as the river bends or there's a rock in the river and the water's going around it, you, the water sits still. You always see the canoers and the kayak are sort of ducking in behind the rocks so they don't get flushed down the river. We call these back eddies. These little swirls are where the water in the river is sitting still or where the blood in our leg is sitting still. When we have these back eddies, it's considered a clotting risk. And in the case of this patient, her clot probably started right where the blood changed direction. And because the valve was broken and the feed was coming from this area, the snowball was from superficial to deep. And that's what got her in trouble. So when I explained this to her, she said, okay, great. Let's just take care of that vein. 
And like I was saying earlier, my 90 plus patients, they're the ones who say, okay, let's just do this. Let's fix this. I want to hold on to my health. So sure enough, after she was treated with anticoagulation for about three months, she had a nice channel of flow around the old damage. So we said, okay, let's go ahead and seal this vein shut for good. So we ended up doing an endothermal approach. We placed an IV, we threaded our little fiber optic, we numbed it up with the numbing medicine on the outside, and then we turned it on, pulled it back, and we restored her laminar flow. And I'm really happy to say that for the five years following that, she would drive herself down, drive herself up. Her last two years, um, I believe her niece drove with her, but she was able to resume the same quality of life she had prior to this event. And I feel like that's what vein care is all about. And just for the record, that same patient after, um, other health issues, decided it was time for her to eventually stay in Florida. And she used to check in with me annually. Now I get a card annually. And last October, she sent me a card and she thanked me for all of our good work. And she said she's really looking forward to her 100th birthday this October. So, you know, when people ask me, is it too late to get vein care? I'm 70. I always think about her and, you know, even if we're just helping for a few years, even if we're just preserving vein health for a short period, it's still oftentimes truly, truly worth it.